And this is going to be something we're going to continue to do. We're going to continue to raise awareness uh, to this crisis at America's southern border. It was exclusively created by President Biden when he, with the stroke of a pen, right when he took the oath of office, undid policies that were working to control our southern border. It had a ripple effect that immediately resulted in people coming by the thousands a day illegally across the Rio Grande and other parts of our southern border. Uh, with the members that have gone down the border, they've all seen the same things. Uh, we went with Border Patrol agents. Uh, we went to a shift change, and then they took us out to one of the temporary processing centers right by the Rio Grande River. And it was, it was alarming. As Ann said, it was heartbreaking uh, to see what was going on within minutes. We saw just parades of people coming across, and they were coming across in groups of maybe five or six, because that's how many would fit on the rafts that were being deployed from the Mexico side right across the Rio Grande. They'd send them over. A group of five or six would come through the, the brush, and then they would go and start getting processed. And then a few minutes later, another group and another group, and it was constant the entire night. Around midnight, we went over by the Rio Grande, and as we were going that way, we saw more people just coming through underbrush, uh, young children, uh, many of them unaccompanied. Uh, the abuse, the sexual abuse and rape that is happening to these young girls uh, is, is heartbreaking. It should be something that President Biden acknowledges and stops. He can stop this today. Uh, he won't go down to the border. Uh, we're calling on President Biden to go down to the border himself and see what he created, this mess that he's created uh, and the carnage these kids are going through right now. This is a detention facility right here. It's a cell. It's a holding cell uh, that's set up by the federal government. This one was designed for 33 people. There were over 400 kids in that cell the day we went there. And there were multiple cells like this set up. Every one of them with over 400 people that were designed for 33 kids. They're on top of each other. Uh, a large percentage have COVID, which means it's got to be spreading uh, through everybody. Uh, but in the meantime, imagine a restaurant back home in any state in America. If you're over 100% capacity with state guidelines, they're going to probably shut that restaurant down. Here you've got the federal government running a, a facility with holding cells over 1,000% above capacity where the government would shut somebody down if they were doing this in the private industry. The federal government is doing this to these young kids. Uh, it's the definition. If you read Texas's law on child abuse and neglect, what's happening in that federal facility and the, the, the Biden administration is running violates uh, Texas's own laws. It's, it's, it's a national disgrace. And President Biden puts Kamala Harris in charge of it, and she refuses to go down. Maybe she, because she doesn't want to be associated with this disgraceful policy. But if she's the Vice President of the United States and the President put her in charge of this, Vice President Harris needs to go down to the border and see this for herself. Because maybe she would then encourage President Biden to reverse his policies that have failed. Again, you can go back to the Trump policies. Remain in Mexico. Everybody will tell you that policy was working. The Border Patrol agents tell us. It's not like you get 10 opinions when you ask the same question to 10 different people. Our Border Patrol agents are all telling us the same thing. One, they signed up for this tough job because they want to stop the drug cartels from bringing drugs into America. What's happening now is the drug cartels are running America's southern border. They're making millions of dollars a day off of this enterprise that was created by President Biden's executive actions. And they don't want uh, to be at midnight changing diapers when instead they could be stopping fentanyl and heroin from coming into America's uh, border. But that's what they're doing right now because that's what President Biden's policy has created. President Biden created it. He can reverse it today. He needs to go see for himself the damage that he's doing and stop this madness. Uh, one final point I'll make before we open it up to questions. Uh, starting shortly, we are going to be uh, initiating a discharge petition on Ann Wagner's Born Alive Act. So Kat Kamak from Florida will be filing the discharge petition. If 218 <coughs> members of Congress sign that discharge petition, it will bring the bill to the floor immediately that says if a baby is born alive outside the womb, it can't be murdered and called abortion. Unfortunately, that's happening in states like New York and others uh, that are looking to, to continue this barbaric practice. The only way to stop it is with an act of Congress. Uh, Speaker Pelosi won't bring the bill to the floor, but with 218 signatures, that bill can come to the floor on its own. So we are going to be filing that discharge petition this morning. Uh, hopefully we'll get enough signatures. Five Democrats signing on will bring that bill to the floor. And I know a lot more 
Democrats in that ran saying they were pro-life. You can't be pro-life if you don't sign this discharge petition. Uh, so that's going to start today, and then, of course, at noon today, we're going to be very proud uh, to be at the swearing-in of Julia Letlow, uh, which she will be our newest member of Congress, but as the dean of the Louisiana delegation, I'm especially proud uh, of Julia getting sworn in. Uh, we were so sad uh, to see the death of her husband, Luke, by just days before his swearing-in. Uh, Julia just got elected in a special election. She will become the first Republican woman ever elected to Congress from Louisiana. We're incredibly proud to have her joining our conference and Louisiana's congressional delegation in a few hours. With that, be happy to open it up to questions. Um, yeah. a, a few days ago, uh, former President Trump had some tough words for Senator McConnell. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but I'm curious uh, your thoughts and his changing thoughts. Does the former president bad-mouthing Republican leaders complicate your task of taking control of Congress next year? Well, we're very focused on taking back the House next year. <laughs> and frankly, when you look at the socialist agenda being pushed by Speaker Pelosi and President Biden, uh, people are turning away from it. They're talking about an infrastructure bill. It's Soviet-style infrastructure, what they're talking about. Over 90% of the bill they're proposing has nothing to do with roads and bridges. Uh, people would expect, if you're going to have a trillions of dollar, $2 trillion bill, that it would be all about roads and bridges. Theirs is not. It's a lot of Green New Deal. It's uh, you know expanding the role of the federal government. It's raising taxes on hardworking families. National Association of Manufacturers said uh, that hardworking families would lose over a million jobs in America if they got this bill passed. So President Biden should be working with Republicans on a bipartisan agreement. He still refuses to even meet with Republican leadership. Uh, so when you look at all of this far left socialist policy they're pushing, uh, it's no surprise that a lot of Democrats are getting nervous. They know that our opportunity to win the House back has never been greater next year. And we're focused on doing that. You saw the record breaking numbers uh, that we've raised over this first quarter, record breaking. Uh, and uh, I think it shows you that people are focused on getting the House back, putting a check and balance on this radical, out of control Biden administration. Will Trump play a role in that? Oh, I'm sure President Trump will play an active role. And, you know, he said it's, it's very, uh, you know, very, he's very interested in helping us win the House back. And uh, I think a lot of Americans across the country who may have voted for President Biden and some of Speaker Pelosi's uh, Democrat members of Congress are alarmed by just how far left uh, towards a socialist agenda they moved in a short time. Um, with the allegations swirling around the Congressman Matt Gates, do you have confidence in him? Well, you know, we've heard a lot of stories. I mean, obviously I've read the, read the media reports, but uh, there's been nothing that we've seen yet from the Department of Justice. Uh, if something's going on, obviously we'll find out about it. Uh, you know, right now it, it's, it's hard to speculate on, on rumors, uh, but, you know, if, if something really formal happened from justice, we would, of course, react and take action. So you still have confidence in him? Well, look, I, I haven't talked to him to, to get his, uh, you know, get his explanation of what, what's been alleged, it's serious things alleged. Obviously, we want to get the facts. But do you plan to talk to him? Uh, I would imagine I will be and this week. I haven't talking? seen him. Uh, we just had a conference meeting. Uh, you know, we're, we're still hybrid where we have in-person and people virtually. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't there in the room. I'm not sure if he was on. A, have you had any conversations with the minority leader about whether he should be removed from any of his committee assignments, particularly we have, and if you look historically, uh, you know, there have been a few cases where members have had charges filed against them for various things, and we've removed them from committees uh, immediately when that happened. That's been the precedent uh, that we've always followed. Last question. Can you get your reaction to the hold on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Um, there's some concern that this is going to increase vaccine hesitancy as former President Trump criticized that. Well, you know, the first two vaccines that were approved are still uh, very effective and safe. Uh, this one, we'll see if it may actually be reinstated, let the FDA run their process. Uh, we have Dr. Fauci uh, and Dr. Walensky, the CDC director, coming before the select subcommittee on coronavirus, which I'm the ranking Republican on. Uh, Majority Whip Clyburn is the chairman of that committee. Uh, they will be coming before our committee Thursday, tomorrow. Uh, and I'm sure this will be one of the many things that we'll be discussing. Are you concerned about it making people more hesitant to get vaccines? Well, I, you know, you, you want to encourage people to, to get a vaccine if they want to. And uh, if you look at the Johnson & Johnson decision, it was based on not, not, not a specific finding, but they, they saw some people that had blood clots that had gotten that. They want to see if it's related to the vaccine. This is the FDA process. Uh, and the FDA, the FDA is still the gold standard in the world uh, for approval of vaccinations. We, we were able to get a vaccination out uh, for multiple vaccinations out for COVID 
uh, in record time, but they didn't cut any corners. If you look at Moderna, Pfizer, they were heavily tested on tens of thousands of Americans, and, uh, and it seems to be yielding very positive results. With Johnson & Johnson, let's see what the FDA process yields there. I, I have confidence in the FDA's process. I think we're still the gold standard in the world, uh, and, and other countries look to us still for guidance on how to properly approve and distribute vaccines. Thanks, guys. Well, thank you all. We'll see you all on the floor for Julia swearing in.